это моя любенькая Анюша. Моя Боже, это моя любенькая Анюша. Моя Боже, это моя любенькая Анюша. Моя Боже. Татья, Татья. Татья, Татья. Боже, Боже. You must rest now. Your father will be here soon. Father? Yes. Your aunt sent for him. Oh, no. No. I don't want to see him. Father mustn't know what's happened to me. Promise you won't tell. Promise. Promise. Yes. Yes. I promise, dear. Lie quiet now. Quiet. <laughs> A letter has come for your doctor. They said it was urgent. Mm. It's probably from my daughter. You ought to see her. She's in the Royal Ballet, Peter. My hat and coat. Anya, little Anya, don't you know me? Father. Yeah. Do you know that I'm going to die? No, no. Anya, tell me the name of the man. No. But, 
I must know his name. Oh, no. Tell me. Tell me. No. Please, please. Let her go. The Petrov necklace. Give it to me. So, it was one of the Petrovs. Is it Prince Gregor? No. Nicholas? No. Is it Ivan? No, no. I swear that it wasn't. Listen. I've never heard of the Petrov drum. How amazing. Prince Ivan, Mr. Kent has never heard of the drums of Jeopardy. No. Oh, that's uh, something the New York papers must have missed. <laughs> what are they? A family heirloom. A necklace of rubies. My great-grandfather brought it from India. Huh. You're one generation off, my boy. He was my great-grandfather. And they do say that he stole the drums from the neck of the emperor's wife. And I can't quite think how he managed it. Why do you call them the drums? Because the necklace is made up of the figures of four Indian drummers. The heads of the drums are rubies. We'll show them to you. Gregor. Yes, Grandfather? Go down to the safe and bring me the drums. I want to show them to Mr. Kent. Well, it's uh, it's been so long since I've opened the safe, I'm afraid I've forgotten the combination. Oh, please, don't trouble. Oh, it's no trouble. Uh, Nicholas! 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 Oh, Nicholas, the general is calling you. What? Nicholas, you don't wrestle. Come here. Yes, Grandfather. So she said to me, uh, come back again sometime, Prince, but uh, next time, come around to the back door. <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it. Up your not. Now you go down to the safe and bring me the drums. I want to show them to Mr. Chen. Coming right up, Chief. Where'd he learn that American slang? The young imp's mother was an American, and he picked up his Yankee impudence at Yale. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, here they are, Grandfather. But the safe wasn't locked. Not locked? None. You know, there is a superstition about the necklace. They claim that if one of the drummers is detached and sent to a man, that he will die within 24 hours. Oh. Why, it's gone. Gregor. Oh, Gregor. Why, I, I don't know where it is. Gregor!
which one of you is responsible for this? You do not answer. A man of the people has no right to ask who caused the death of his daughter. You won't tell me? Then I'll kill you all. <laughs> get, get that gun away. Wait. Where are the Petrov drums? I have them. Someday I shall return them to the Petrovs. One by one. How did you get this? One of our men is in service at the hotel where the Petrovs are staying. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Listen to this. Karloff was sent to Siberia for his attempt on the lives of our family. But he escaped and has become a leader among the Bolsheviks. His power in Europe is enormous. And we are coming to America in hopes of evading him. We sail the 22nd on the Latonia. The Lettonia. Why all the champagne? We've got to celebrate our safe arrival. Oh, but we're not in yet, my boy. We'll dock just as soon as the fog lifts. Here's your glass, Uncle. Thank you. Come on, Stephen. You're in on this. Thank you, Highness. Here's to our new life in America. 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 Stuart. How did it get here? It came on a pilot boat, sir. It's one of the drums. We'll never get away from him. He'll kill us all. Stephen, go fetch the captain. Tell him we must see him here at once. Yes, Highness. What do you intend to do? I intend to have the captain put us ashore before the boat docks. Send this radio camp to meet us ashore. There's the captain. This gentleman wishes to see you, sir. Russian Department of the United States Secret Service, sir. I come from Martin Kent. Oh, come in. Come right in. Karloff is in America. Be watching for you to land tomorrow. Mr. Kent sent you to bring you ashore in a special tender. You must leave at once. 
but our servant's gone for the captain. Your servant is to stay on board and bring your luggage through the customs. Are you armed? I have a revolver. Good. Come with me, gentlemen. Be very quiet. Darn nice of you. Carlos. I was afraid your friend, Mr. Kent, might fail you. So I took his place. Oh, you... Gently, gently. Your weapon is gone? Too bad. <laughs> Someone must have stolen it. I was very sorry to hear of your grandfather's death. You... Wait. Sit down. Don't excite yourself, friend. He died quite painlessly. What are you going to do with us? Wait and see. Take him around this way. All right, come on. There he goes.
Put up your hands. Please. Put them up. Please. Stay where you are. But, miss, I'm Prince Nicholas Petro. No. And I thought you were the Prince of Wales. Please believe me. I'm trying to save my own. A party that most of us have All I want to do is use the telephone. You can keep me covered. I can't see. I... I've been hurt. I'll get it. Whom do you want? Martin Kent. Park Avenue. You say a party of Russians left the liner? Yes, sir, on a private cruiser. In their stateroom on a pad of radio blanks, we found the impression of a message addressed to you. Martin Kent speaking. Hello, Mr. Kent. Just a minute. Here. Here he is. Huh? What? Hello? This is Nicholas Petrov. Send help, quick. Karloff has my uncle. Well, where are you? What is this address? 17 Van Vort Place. A studio on the roof. 17 Van Vort Place. I... 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 Dead. What's happening, sir? I don't know, but I mean to find out. Come on. I came to get you. Karloff and his men. I know. Tell us in the machine. Where are you going? Going to get your uncle out of Karloff's hands. You ought to have a man in your room at this hour of the night. Please, Auntie, go quickly. And what you're doing with him is more than I can make. Hurry. Auntie, hurry. Please, hurry. There isn't a mighty law you trying to hurry me. I won't go out without my teeth and my corset. And what's more, I'm going to tell you the Don't management of the department. Go. go. Stop pushing me. I can't go out in the street like this. But it's a matter of life and death, Auntie. Please, hurry. Well, all I've got to say is... When I get back, you've got a lot of explaining to do. Did you get any trace of him? No, he's disappeared completely. Young man. Young man. Young man. I want to find a doctor. A doctor? There's a man been hurt in that studio apartment up there. Man hurt? I don't know where he came from, but he's got a gash across his forehead. Oh, that is too bad, madam. I will get you a doctor immediately. I know one that lives right close by. Good. Hurry up. Yes, madam. Now, don't stop and dawdle. No, madam. I am sorry to keep your highness waiting, but I hate to part with you until I have your nephews to keep me company. They can't have gone far, and my men will bring them back. Look here. If you will let my nephews go, you may do anything you want with me. I swear I won't even cry out. <laughs> But I want you to cry out. Doctor. Yes? We found Prince Nicholas. Huh? He's in the next house. 
and wounded. They sent me for a doctor. Well, we must not disappoint them. Get my hat and coat in the bag. Uh, the black bag. Luck is with me tonight, Your Highness. But before I leave, we have a little matter to settle, you and I. Come on. I told you how it would be if we came to New York and lived on a roof. Now you see? Men popping in at 2 a.m. and me running around in curl papers. Take decent. How do you know he isn't a murderer that came in to cut our throats? Why didn't you shoot him? Here, you're not doing that right. Give it to me. There's the doctor. Good evening. You have an injured man here? Yes, and I'm afraid he's badly hurt. Well. How do? Good evening. Good. So you found him? Yes, madam. And came yourself? I had to, to show him the way, madam. Who's this? That is the doctor's assistant, madam. Oh. Hmm. You don't think he's going to die? That would not surprise me at all. There, there, don't take on. It isn't as if he was a friend of the family. I am afraid that what I have to do can't be done here. I'll have him taken to my office. Uh, I think he'd rather stay here. Stuff and nonsense. Of course the doctor must take him. Good. Now then. Come on, boy. You? What? What did you do with my... Uncle. Oh, there, there, there. No. There, there. Let me go. There, there. Quiet. Let me go. There. It's a strange thing about these head wounds. One never knows what uh, hallucinations they will produce. I'll quiet him. No, please. Let me go. I tell you. May I ask you to help me? Now, push down the sleeve. Well down. There. Please. Please. Don't let him touch me. Try to understand. It's the doctor. No. No, I tell you. It's Carlo. There now. Hold him tight now. There. Wait, wait a minute. Stop. What nonsense is this? No, no. I wouldn't interfere with the doctor, miss. Let her alone. Hold you him. Take your hand Hold off him. Her. Drop that. Quick. You have a positive genius for being just in time, Mr. Kent. Don't stop to talk. Take me to Prince Ivan. And if I should refuse? What's that? Oh Quick, get him! Oh, I've killed him. No, no, you didn't kill him. He's been dead for some time. 
Are you sure? Look at his throat. Well, there's no sign of him in there. Brett, phone Kennedy to send more men. Excuse me, please. Brett, Brett, when you get Kennedy on the phone, tell him I want to drag that thrown around this district. Yes, sir. And Brett, while you're about it, you might as well telephone me here. Such hanky-panky at 2 o'clock in the morning. Everybody trampling around, stepping all over people. You two boys have got to get out of here at once. Where can we go? Well, I'm hanged if I know. I wish I knew some place outside of town where I could feel you were safe. I know. Aunt Abby's house. Where's that? It's way off in the country. They'd never find it. Well, that might be just the place to lie low for a few days. Not me. I don't leave here until we get Karloff. Oh, now look here, my boy. You've got to realize we're dealing with a madman. Let me run things. So long as you're here, my hands are tied. But with you safely out of the way... Please, I... please do as he says. Nick, Nick, don't be a fool. We've got to get away from here. All right, I'll go. Yeah, now then that's settled. Now I've got a plan for smuggling you out of the house so that no one will know. I'll bring my car around the street a block from you. Well, all I've got to say is, if I was running the United States, knit two pearl two. That Karloff had never been let into the country. Knit two pearl two. Makes oysters run up and down my spine to think he's still loose. It's inconceivable to me how he could get away with both the police and Secret Service after him. What's that? It's at the front door. You want me to open it, sir? Yes, but have your gun handy. just came from headquarters with a message from Mr. Kent. Oh, come in. It's a message from headquarters. Mr. Bob Karloff? Karloff is dead, sir. Dead? Yes, sir. Here's a letter. Oh, now you're safe. Well, bless Providence, now we can sleep nights. Does it really say Karloff's dead, Mr. Kent? Yes. One of his men betrayed his hiding place, but before the police could break in, he committed suicide by exploding a bomb. They want you to come up and identify the body, sir. I brought down a car. Oh, I see. You're a new man, aren't you? I don't remember seeing you before. I've been working on the West Coast. Oh. If you want to see my credentials... No, 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 no. This letter's in code. I'll go with you. I don't like his looks. You think it's safe? Now, don't worry. Trust me. Everything will be all right. Now, listen. And get this straight. All right, sir. Where's your car? Down the road, by that old mill. Come on. Well, that's a relief. Well, I don't know how you folks feel, but... All this gallivant has made me hungry. I'm going to fix us a bang-up dinner. Hooray! Hey, Prince, you trot down cellar and fetch me up a bucket of coal. You mean me? Yes, you. 
It won't hurt you to saw your hands for once. Very well. Where is it? Second door to the left. And shake up the furnace while you're down. I'm sorry to speak ill of your kin, but I don't like his face. Aunt Abby! Don't you Aunt Abby me, Kitty Conover. He's the spitting image of that fellow sold me stock in a diamond mine last spring. You don't see me wearing any diamonds, do you? <laughs> don't go. I want to tell you what a trump I think you were for trusting me last night. I didn't trust you. I had you covered all the time. Like American music? And American girls. My mother was an American. My father met her over here and fell in love with her. It runs in the family. <laughs> I like American weddings, too. Good evening, Mr. Kent. Good evening, Doctor. I see the reports of your death have been considerably exaggerated. Considerably. I suppose it was the traitor who was found dead in your place. Right. Just before the bomb exploded, I changed clothes with him and escaped under the very noses of your men. <laughs> if you're not afraid to try one. Oh, no, not at all. I don't believe you'd be so unoriginal as to... Uh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't need to ask how your man got hold of that letter from headquarters. No. I fancy it's quite obvious. The body of their messenger ought to show up at the top of the mill pond in, say, four or five days. I figured the code letter would keep you from suspecting my man. But still... I'm disappointed in you, Mr. Kent. I didn't think you would walk into my trap quite so blindly. Would it make you any happier to know I saw the trap and walked into it deliberately? <laughs> when I heard the body was unrecognizable, I knew you were still alive. And in hopes of preventing further killings, I let your man lead me to you so that I could do this. <laughs> uh, an excellent shot. All of them over the heart. But fortunately, in Russia, I acquired the habit of wearing a bulletproof vest. Peter? We searched him, sir. He took my revolver away. I had the second one hidden. Very clever. But didn't it occur to you that you might fail? And that the consequences would not be pleasant? Naturally. <laughs> you should have been a Russian, Mr. Kent. You would have been a great help to me. Hardly. You see, I consider you a madman. Because I kill people? Yesterday you killed my man. Just now you tried to kill me. Do you consider yourself a madman? Take him upstairs. A little formula I'm preparing. For me? Oh, no. I can't spare you. Not yet. You amuse me. In fact, you are my trump card. Watch him carefully. And see that he does not escape. Yes, Doctor. Oh. Mr. Kent, I most rudely omitted to answer your question. I'm brewing this for the Petrovs. By the time it is ready, they will be here. That's a mite more of the white meat, Your Highness. 
Oh, thank you. I've had two helpings already. I'll take another piece. You would. Merciful goodness. This certainly is a bad storm blowing up. Well, I wish you wouldn't make so much fuss about it. I never did see that lightning did anybody any good. Except lightning rod salesman. Only the wind. I saw a man's face out there. I know I did. Wait, I'll see. Wait. You mustn't go out there, sir. Mr. Kent left positive orders. Oh, that's nonsense. There isn't any danger there now. Karloff is dead. You wait here. I'll go and see. Someone has been here. Who oh, are the lights? Look on the lights. Where are they? Over there in the corner. What work? There are all the house. Where is the candle? Here's the match. Why, where is Brett? He he must be out there. Brett, Brett. Oh, Brett. Wait, listen. There's someone at the front door. I'll go. Is he dead? I don't know. Help me get him over there, quick. All right. They got me. Karloff is alive. What's this? It's uh, addressed to you. I'm going to phone the sheriff. Hello? Hello? Hello, why don't you answer? Hello? What's Hello? the matter, Rathie? I can't seem to get anybody. Hello? Wrong. No, I can't get anyone. Let me try. Hello. 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 They've cut the line. Kitty Conover, come with me. We get some more candles. One thing we're going to have is plenty of light. Gregor. Gregor. Do you know what this means? Karloff is alive. There's only one thing for us to do. You and I have got to get out of this house. Out of this house? Yes. As long as we stay here, we're endangering the women. But we can't go out. Karloff will kill us. Well, we can give him a run for his money. Well, you can go if you want to. But I'm staying here. But listen, Gregor. I'm staying here. Please. Wait. He's right. You can't leave this house tonight. You must be sensible. Karloff has no quarrel with you. If we leave here, he'll let you alone. All he wants is Gregor and me.
land. Oh, it's you, is it? Where are you going? To get the sheriff. When it comes to killing men all over my front steps, he's got to put a stop to it. But they'll catch you. Well, if they do, leastways I'll have the comfort of giving the ruffians a piece of my mind. Wait. In case Karloff should get you, I've got a message. I've been wondering how to get it to him. I'm offering to give myself up if you let the rest of you go. Well, now, that's real noble of you, Prince. Maybe I've been a little hasty. You aren't so bad. Here. We'll talk some more when I get back with the sheriff. Nicholas, please. There's no use arguing. Gregor and I are leaving. But I don't want you to go. I'm sorry, but... Gregor. Gregor. I wonder where he is. Gregor. Gregor. Aunt Abby. Aunt Abby. Aunt Abby. I wonder where they are. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they're upstairs. Well, let's go and see. Well, the fellow actually offers to trust my word. A rat caught in a trap has no choice. Very true. Bring him. I have a use for rats. I will bring him. Now we'll talk. I do not doubt it, madam. I've been waiting to get at you for a long time. I'm flattered, Miss Cram. Well, you won't be so flattered. You'll be flattened when I get through. I've been itching to give you a piece of my mind. But, my dear... Now, don't you try to talk, because it won't do you mighty good till I've had my say. <laughs> I know your sort. Making jokes about everything, even murder. I've seen them born and I've seen them grow up. Pulling wings off flies when they're babies. <laughs> Hunting robins with slingshots and drowning tomcats when they're boys. <gasps> Shooting and murdering when they're men. And where are they now? I ask you, where are they now? <laughs> Why, well, I'm sure I don't know. Uh, where are they? Hung. That's what. Every mother son of them. Hung. Doctor, Prince Gregor is outside. And mark my word, my man. Take this woman away. She annoys me. You'll end on the scaffold yourself with your camovars and your vodkas and all your rotten vices. Stop her mouth. All I have to say is, I never did like caviar. Oh, you Russian dancers, squatting down on their hind legs, running a mile and getting nowhere. <laughs> Take your hands off me, you sneaking samovar. And it's for you, you vulgar here, 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 here. Not not your wild cat. What's wrong with I'm never so desperate in all my oh. life. You, you say it is your brother Nicholas who killed my daughter. Yes. And I'll show you a way to get him if you let me go. You haven't anything against me now, have you? I swear, it wasn't I. There's no need to swear. My daughter could never have cared for a thing like you. I have seen men die by the thousand. I've seen them shot against walls, stabbed with bayonets. But never have I seen a man low enough to betray his own brother to save his filthy hide. Ah. I'm not betraying him. I tell you, 
He did it. He did it. Promised you wouldn't touch me. I don't intend to touch your highness. I wish to make a little experiment. I am not certain that this formula is correct. And I need a rat to try it on. Get him. Oh, no! No! In here. Oh, oh you promised. You promised you wouldn't touch me now. Oh, now, go! seems to be quite correct. Remove the body and clear the room of gas. We shall need it again. What is this? It's a storeroom. <laughs> First fingers, dummy. Figure it out. grave. I trust your highness won't find it unhealthy. I don't suppose I'll have time to catch cold. No. This is not for you. It's for Miss Conover. Miss Conover? You're not going to hurt her. Oh, no. You are to use this knife. Why do you think that I was... You killed my daughter, whom I loved. Now I am going to watch you kill the woman you love. I didn't kill your daughter. On my word. I've already had the word of a Petrov that you did. His Highness Prince Gregor betrayed you to me just before he died. You will need your hand. Oh. 
You know you can't force me to do that. It is your choice, Highness. But let me remind you that after your death, she will be in our hands alone. I will give you as long as that candle burns. That ought to be time enough for a very pretty love scene. Remember, the candle is burning at both ends. Why did Karloff leave this night? Bring in, Mr. Kent, and that woman. These stones are loose. Maybe we can dig our way out. Well, here we are. You will doubtless be pleased to know that your imprisonment is at an end. You mean you're letting us go? I do. How about Kitty and that young Petrov? When I'm safely away from here, you may remove their bodies. You mean... They're dead? No, not yet. But you will not have long to wait. something else in there. Maybe I can break through it. You expect him to kill that girl? No. I expect him to do something quite different. He will attempt to escape. Get 
Steady there, steady. In a moment, it will all be over. And my work will be completed. An airplane is waiting to take me out of the country. Kent, if you hadn't been such a fool... Snapper! The police! They're all around us! Perhaps I'm not such a fool as you think, Karloff. Before I let you capture me, I had one of my men phone New York for help. Peter! Your friend was clever, clever enough. No, no, wait, the women. My time is short, I cannot wait. Try and get him out. Now, you see the men he got into? I told you how to be if we went to New York and lived on a roof. Men popping in at 2 o'clock in the morning and us having to flee out here into the country and getting mixed up with a gang of scoundrels like this. Bullets flying everywhere and dead men are laying over the floor. Well, for land's sake. 